human diversity and individual instruction. One of the most important facts about human nature is the great diversity among individuals. Of course, there are certain broad characteristics, physical and mental, which are common to all human beings. But more than any other species, individual men are distinct and separate individuals. Not only is each fingerprint unique, each personality is unique as well. Each person is unique in his tastes, interests, abilities and chosen activities. Animal activities, routine and guided by instinct, tend to be uniform and alike. But human individuals, despite similarities in ends and values, despite mutual influences, tend to express the unique imprint of the individual's own personality. The development of individual variety tends to be both the cause and the effect of the progress of civilization. As civilization progresses, there is more opportunity for the development of a person's reasoning and tastes in a growing variety of fields. And from such opportunities come the advancement of knowledge and progress, which in turn add to the society's civilization. Furthermore, it is the variety of individual interests and talents that permits the growth of specialization and division of labor on which civilized economies depend. As the Reverend George Harris expressed it, Savagery is uniformity. The principal distinctions are sex, age, size and strength. Savages think alike, or not at all, and converse therefore in monosyllables. There is scarcely any variety, only a horde of men, women and children. The next higher stage, which is called barbarism, is marked by increased variety of functions. There is some division of labour, some interchange of thought better leadership, more intellectual and aesthetic cultivation. The highest stage, which is called civilization, shows the greatest degree of specialization. Distinct functions become more numerous. Mechanical, commercial, educational, scientific, political and artistic occupations multiply. The rudimentary societies are characterized by the likeness of equality. The developed societies are marked by the unlikeness of inequality. Or variety. As we go down, monotony. As we go up, variety. As we go down, persons are more alike. As we go up, persons are more unlike. It certainly seems as though the approach to equality is declined towards the conditions of savagery, and as though variety is an advance towards higher civilization. Certainly, then, if progress is to be made by added satisfactions, there must be even more variety of functions, new and finer differentiations of training and pursuits. Every step of progress means the addition of a human factor that is in some way unlike all existing factors. The progress of civilization, then, must be an increasing diversification of the individuals that compose society. There must be articulation of each new invention and art, of fresh knowledge, and of broader application of moral principles. With the development of civilization and individual diversity, there is less and less area of identical uniformity, and therefore less equality. Only robots on the assembly line, or blades of grass, can be considered as completely equal, as being identical with respect to all of their attributes. The fewer attributes that two organisms have in common, the less they are equal, and the more they are unequal. Civilized human beings, therefore, are unequal in most of their personalities. This fact of inequality, in tastes and in ability and character, is not necessarily an invidious distinction. It simply reflects the scope of human diversity. It is evident that the common enthusiasm for equality is, in the fundamental sense, anti-human. It tends to repress the flowering of individual personality and diversity, and civilization itself. It is a drive towards savage uniformity. Since abilities and interests are naturally diverse, a drive toward making people equal in all or most respects is necessarily a levelling downward. It is a drive against development of talent, genius, variety and reasoning power. Since it negates the very principles of human life and human growth, the creed of equality and uniformity is a creed of death and destruction. 
There is a sense, however, in which equality among men is sensible and beneficial. Each individual should have the freest possible scope for the development of his faculties and his personality. In order to have this scope, he must have freedom from violence against himself. Violence can only repress and destroy human growth and endeavour, and neither can reason and creativity function under an atmosphere of coercion. If each person has equal defence against violence, this equality before the law will permit him to maximise his potentialities. Since each person is a unique individual, it is clear that the best type of formal instruction is that type which is suited to his own particular individuality. Each child has different intelligence, aptitudes and interests. Therefore, the best choice of pace, timing, variety and manner of the courses of instruction will differ widely from one child to another. One child is best suited, in interests and ability, for an intensive course in arithmetic three times a week, followed six months later by a similar course in reading. Another may require a brief period of several courses. A third may need a lengthy period of instruction in reading, etc. Given the formal, systematic courses of instruction, there is an infinite variety of pace and combination which may be most suitable for any particular child. It is obvious, therefore, that the best type of instruction is individual instruction. A course where one teacher instructs one pupil is clearly by far the best type of course. It is only under such conditions that human potentialities can develop to their greatest degree. It is clear that the formal school, characterised by classes in which one teacher instructs many children, is an immensely inferior system. Since each child differs from the other in interest and ability, and the teacher can only teach one thing at a time, it is evident that every school class must cast all the instruction into one uniform mould. Regardless how the teacher instructs, at what pace, timing or variety, he is doing violence to each and every one of the children. Any schooling involves misfitting each child into a Procrustean bed of unsuitable uniformity. <laughs>